Hey everybody and welcome to Stock Abilities. Today I'm going to be covering the Naked Brand Group. I've covered it quite a few times here in this channel, but I'm going to be covering it again here with some updates. Of course, these aren't updates, but these are just kind of excitement from a lot of different brands. The Naked Brand is fairly well known. It's a fairly big company and it's expanding with the Benden Company. Both looking pretty good here. I'm going to go into details, so make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And let's get started here. Now, we got the new filing here. The parties have determined to modify the structure of the merger such that they would merge into a subsidiary of a newly formed Australian holding company. And the shareholders of Naked and Bendon, respectively, would be issued shares of the new co. That's just a placeholder, just if you guys aren't aware. That would act as the new public company following consummation of the transaction. So this isn't really a delay. This is more of an amendment. Keep that in mind. They're simply waiting on the vote. Now the vote is dependent on the pre-merger financing. So when the pre-merger financing is all set up as per another filing that I covered in another video, if you want to check that out, they're all set to go. And that is due by the 22nd. So you're probably not going to be waiting until April 10th for real news especially with the Roth conference coming up. I'll be getting that in just a second. But as you can see, the price has been kind of all over the place here. But most notably here, since it's pop, it's actually been holding pretty well here. And it went down a good bit, but it was only temporary. It did go down to about 180, but the shares that were involved with that were not very much. It was doing an ask at, I believe it was 478, so that is something also to keep in mind. The chart's been up and down, up and down, but something to keep in mind also is this This is not a technical stock. This is just a news-based stock. So if you're using technicals and you're going all the way back months and months, you're not going to get very accurate results because that was way before the letter of intent. So keep that in mind. Now something to notice here. The... Institutional buy-ins aren't that great. Some sold very little shares and bought very little. Of course, there's still good, sort of good, decent holdings. Uh, what to wait out for is the Roth conference, see how that goes, and see how it gets closer to the end of the month and into April. Once again, the 22nd is when their pre-major financing is due, so keep that date in mind. Going a little bit further here, something to note is that the actual company itself holds over 1 million shares. Now they had a chance to sell some of those shares at a very high percent profit, but they did not sell a single one. The number of shares sold in the past three months or the past 12 months is absolutely zero. They just keep buying in more and more, and that's because they know the value of the company itself. You got 761,000 shares. 70,000, 172,000, and so on, and you get the point. They hold a lot of shares in combination with each other, and the stock is going to be going very well in the next week or two. I'm going to go a little bit of detail further here. Something I haven't really went into is actually the history of the individuals behind the company. Now, you got Carol Hodgman, a chief executive officer, Chief Creative Officer and Chairwoman, and she's been creating intimate apparel for more than 30 years in the driving force behind the Carol Hotchman Design Group, for which she served as the Creative Chief Officer until 2013, and she was previously CEO until its acquisition by Comar in 2010. She's a good brand specialist. She's the one getting all these HSN deals and all that kind of exciting stuff. She's really getting attention to the Naked brand, growing it pretty well. You got the HSN brand, and you got some uh, new people on board for the partnership. You can listen to my other video about that. And as you can see, just some different brand experience. You guys can look it up and see for yourself. There's a lot of promise. You go a little bit further here. You got another person with over many, many years of experience here. And it goes in a little bit of details here. I wanted to build a product, feel like wearing nothing at all, and performed all day. And then they go, all those details. Very promising. Go scroll down a little bit further here. 
he is the founder and so keep that in mind and so if you see him smiling and you see him at the Yeroth conference it's probably good news the brand itself was very ingenious and it's been a very popular growing brand go a little bit further you got the other people here you got 30 years of experience in both finance and operations 18 years of experience in intimate apparel strategic sale development merchandising and distribution they want the US market Benden does so keep that in mind you go into further details here with some of the other team you guys can read this all on their page there's a lot of different details about the team and why they're beneficial. Hotchman is probably their number one in regards to brand recognition. That's really helped the company. But we're going to go just a little bit further here. You got the Comfortably You brand and of course you got the HSN which has aired to roughly over 90 million homes. That's a lot of exposure for the brand as you can read. It goes into detail here, but they've been airing it off and on for quite a while here. So not only do you have the earnings report that's going to be very positive, but you got the Roth conference coming up. That's going to be showcasing a lot of their brand and the reason why they want to merge. Some of the different brands here in Benden and some of the history here. Now, Benden's been around since 1947. He got founded by Ray Hurley, a formal naval officer, and his brother does a pattern cutter by profession. And they together revolutionized revenue. Uh, together they revolutionized the lingerie industry, and they go into details about it. Now they've been around since 1947. Keep that in mind. They've been growing constantly into a bigger and bigger brand, as you can see here. And then you got. Innovation becomes the key to bend in success with the introduction of the stretch strap bras and stri stretch money fashions going into 1968. You got the launches, the New Zealand's first color coordinated slip bras and briefs. Then you go a little bit more sophisticated. They're starting to get brand awareness here. And then they're starting to acquire different companies like Fair Form 2000, a brand offering superior comfort support. And they go a little bit further. Uh, Intimate launch is a new category. They're expanding some more. And it just goes on and on. Their expansion has been really great. Their profit's been really great. The limitation as they go up here, they got Heidi Klum in 2015. And as you go, 2016, they expanded that. And, of course, they're in the 2017. And the problem they're having is the lack of expansion. Now they need to get into the U.S. market more, and that is their goal for this year. And that is what the point of the merger is. Now this will save them literally millions and millions of dollars. So keep that in mind. Not only is an IPO very expensive, but expanding into the U.S. market is very expensive as well and time consuming. They want to get this right off the ground and probably within the year to start expanding. So you're going to see a lot of growth after the merger, probably by 2018. We're going to go a little bit more detail here about the Roth Conference. I cover this sort of in my other video. But you got 500 participating companies and over 4,000 attendees. And now these attendees aren't just anybody. They're actual institutional investors, private equity investors, VCs, company executives, and others. So they're looking for basically brand building and institutional value built into it. Now we're going in an article I found here in particular. You got to, not only do numerous de deals get done at the conference each year, the entertainment extravaganza helps to draw large institutional investors. That's very important to keep in mind because that is exactly what they need right now. So if the Roth conference goes very well and everybody likes the presentation and there's no doubt that they will, you'll be seeing a lot of institutional buy-ins probably right before the merger actually happens. So you're going to see the sky, price skyrocket. It's very low right now. And of course, let me go all the way back here. Let me find it here. Well, it's here somewhere, but the short answer is that you got the institutional buy-ins and you got the insiders buying in here and you got all this other exciting stuff. Most of them are holding this. Now they got to hold this roughly for about a year from the merger completion. So you keep that in mind, guys, that this is a very long-term hold. The company itself 
Benden is a very well established company, so this isn't this isn't just some nickel dime thing like I don't know uh, Jagex or something. Not saying that's a bad company. I'm just saying that the value in this particular company is worth far more. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you like this video and you want more videos just like this. We'll see how it goes this week. I'm, I'm seeing it as a very promising growth coming up here. Let me go all the way back here. Okay, here we go. Now, um, the price has been fluctuating. I covered this at the beginning of the video. I'm going to cover this really quick before I close out. You got 210 and it's back to 224. I'd say a good price to try to get in if it starts dipping is under 215. It's not going to break the $2 limit, so you don't have to worry about that. So if you get in above the $2 slightly, that's a good buy-in price. Other than that, it's just a hold and see what happens with the news. Now you can be waiting up till April, so keep that in mind. It might be a longer hold than you might expect, so you're going to get a lot of volatility up until the merger completion. Thanks for listening in. Have a nice day.